Question. What do an animated movie about a penguin, a family film about a pig, and a series of violent post-apocalyptic action films all have in common? The answer is writer and director George Miller. At first glance, these three worlds seem totally different. Why would the director of the Mad Max franchise want to spend most of his time making children's movies? But if we examine each of these films more closely, we find that there is a pattern of social commentary that unites them. Anyone who's studied the Mad Max films has probably noticed the parallels to modern issues like our rampant consumption of non-renewable resources, or the wealth inequality. The dystopian world of the story is a metaphor for what George Miller perceives as the dystopia that's emerging within modern society. In Happy Feet, the dystopia is no longer just a metaphor. Instead, we have a story that takes place within our own present-day world, showing us environmental problems that are going on right now. Note how, like Mad Max, it also takes place in a desert wasteland, albeit an icy one instead of a dry and dusty one. Babe, however, takes us the closest to our own world, presenting commentary on our treatment of animals. Each of these films from the outside doesn't seem like it contains anything of political, literary, or philosophical substance because they're made within genres which typically aren't associated with deeper themes, and yet each of them contain these social messages, communicated to the audience subconsciously, whether that audience is children or adults. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. In this analysis, I'll be focusing on Babe particularly, but it's important that I started by pointing out the film's subtextual connections with George Miller's larger body of work, as I will be referencing some of his other films throughout this video to illustrate some of the motifs at work in this film. Before I get to that, though, let's talk a little bit about context. What is Babe? What is it about? And why is it culturally significant? Babe is an innocent family film about a pig who wants to herd sheep and yet it somehow managed to garner immense praise from critics. It was nominated for seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, and people were describing it as a fable about individualism and conformity, saying that Babe's experiences roughly parallel a child's awakenings to the realities of the world. For some reason, critics take this film really seriously. While researching the film, I even happened to find a very thorough essay using the film's story to illustrate Lacanian psychoanalysis. The highest praise, though, was in The Guardian's review of the film. Instead of relying on cookie-cutter family film narrative structures, fish-out-of-water comedy, say, or against the odds success, Noonan doubles down on developing interpersonal dramas. This results in a sophisticated, character-driven work that just happens to be about talking animals. I happen to agree with this description. It is surprising how seriously people take this movie, and yet, I think it should be taken seriously. Yes, it could be considered a children's film, but really its audience is people of all ages, and people of all ages appreciate this film. It earned the Oscar nominations, as it's clear that a lot of effort was put into it. The film took over seven years to make, as the directors and producers required the most cutting-edge technology to create the talking animals used in the film. Even after 20 years, it still astounds me how well the effects hold up, as the film combines trained animals animatronics from Jim Henson's Creature Shop, and CGI from the Rhythm and Hue Studios, which digitally imposed mouth and facial movements onto the animals. This would soon become common practice, and yet, at the time, these effects were groundbreaking. Moreover, animal trainer Carl Miller trained close to a thousand different animals for the film, only about 500 of which appear in the final film, which is still impressive. And I'd also be amiss if I didn't mention what a great job James Cromwell does in the film, with barely any lines at all. Almost all his performing here is non-verbal, and yet you don't even notice how little he actually speaks in the film, because his silent presence as a character is so strong. The way Babe uses these techniques earns it a secure place in film history, but of course while all of these things do factor in, just because a film was important doesn't mean it's necessarily good. We've still got some ways to go in establishing what makes the film a true modern classic. At this point, I should mention that George Miller did not direct Babe, nor did he come up with a story. The film is based on a 1983 novel entitled The Sheep Pig, and it's directed by Chris Noonan, who is still pretty ticked that most of the film gets chalked up to Miller. Which is fair. Noonan does an amazing job directing. The visual look of the film is impressive to say the least, as the New York Times writes it's photographed to look like a storybook come to life. Watching it for the first time in years, I found every single shot in this film indicating to me that the film was, and still remains, on an entirely different level than most other similar family films. 
If you take a look at the composition and color grading in other animal-centered family films from the 90s and the 2000s, it becomes clear how unique Babe is on both platforms. There's an elegance in the film's high-angle and low-angle shots, how it uses framing and mise-en-scene. But most importantly, it uses very warm, very saturated colors to give it a distinct, rustic beauty. Miller, however, did co-write the screenplay, and considering the comparisons to his other films, his creative input is extremely visible. So let's dive into the themes of Babe with that in mind. Babe and Happy Feet are just as much dystopias as the worlds of the Mad Max films are, because even though from our perspective that might not be the case, Miller shows us through these films how horrible things are from the perspective of animals. The ecosystems that wild animals inhabit are threatened by our industrial expansion, and domestic animals are consistently exploited and killed for our benefit. While Babe is generally light in its tone and atmosphere, there's a dark shadow that hangs over the entire film, a shadow that is only explored up close in brief moments, but never truly ignored. It's really the main plot. Babe's sheep-herding talents are the only thing that saves him from being turned into a pork feast, and it's mentioned constantly. Don't keep pigs. Oh, Christmas Day. Think of it. What a feast. Ooh. <laughs> what could we do with a pig, eh, Duchess? Just think. Two nice hams, two sides of bacon, ooh, and pork chops, kidney, liver, chitlins, pickles, feet, save this luck for black pudding. There's a the telephone. Hug it. Who's that in there? Her name's Rosanna. Why Rosanna? She, she had such a beautiful nature. Oh, Fernand. The film even begins in a factory farm, where we are told immediately that the main character's entire family will all be killed for meat. When our main character learns of this knowledge, it's a moment just as poignant and devastating as any other tragic revelation in a drama about human characters. Are pigs for eating? Who told you that? The cat told me. Pigs don't have a purpose except to be eaten by humans. Is it true? It's true. For many pigs, it's true. So my mother and my father, and my brothers and my sisters, all... Probably, dear. Do you want to talk about it? No, it's all right. I understand. I'll be all right. Let's then consider Babe as a fully developed character. When he enters the farm, he has no name and no identity, but he is given a name, and thus an identity, by Fly, who acts as a mother figure to him from that moment onward. Who are you? I'm a large white. Yes, that's your breed, dear. What's your name? I don't know. Well, what did your mother call you to tell you apart from your brothers and sisters? Our mom called us all the same. And what was that, dear? She, she called us all babe. Much like a true parent, Fly accepts Babe's inherent value as a living creature, but as Babe slowly encounters the social structures set in place around him, he realizes that his inherent value is not recognized by the outside world, and that in order to gain acceptance, he must earn it by proving himself to be valuable in some other respect. This is the essence of maturing from childhood to adulthood, Realizing that the rest of the world doesn't love you like your parents do, and in order to survive independently, you have to come up with some solution to find a role in society. We've established that there are commonalities between all of George Miller's films. All of them, in a sense, can be said to be about the same conflict, a lone hero standing up against cruel, ignorant, and unjust social structures, even though that story manifests itself in different forms. And all of these conflicts have essentially the same solution— communication and ingenuity, but most importantly, empathy. In Mad Max Fury Road, Max has been hardened by his past experiences. He's become a brute whose sole instinct is to survive. He's become animalistic. But by building a bridge of empathy with the Emperor Furiosa, and caring enough to help her on her mission, he regains his humanity. In Happy Feet, People ignore the penguins because they're merely animals, but when the penguins begin to dance, people see them as more human, and change is affected. Likewise, in Babe, we see an animal gaining the empathy of humans by practicing some kind of skill and proving its intelligence. Specifically, Babe's sheep herding is accomplished through direct communication and empathy with the sheep. All right, 
How did you do it? I asked them and they did it. I just asked them nicely. We don't ask sheep, dear. We tell them what to do. But I did, Mom. They were really friendly. And perhaps in some level, the film itself achieves a similar feat, getting its audience to empathize with an animal not traditionally seen as cute, and pushing past that imaginary line that we've created between friend animals and food animals. They'll eat him when he's big enough. Will they eat us when we're big enough? Good heavens, no. The bosses only eat stupid animals like sheep and ducks and chickens. If it's accomplished nothing else, the film has certainly made an impact in terms of animal rights, sparking an entire generation of viewers to become vegans or vegetarians on ethical grounds. I know that this sort of thing is definitely a matter of personal choice, so I'm not going to say one way or the other whether I think we should all be vegans or vegetarians or whatever, but I do think it's important to be aware and to be mindful. After all, most pigs don't grow up on the warm, welcoming farm we see in the film, but rather in the cramped, inhumane conditions of the factory farm we see at the film's beginning. So I'm glad that Babe exists. It's a film which wasn't merely groundbreaking in special effects, but it was also a step above the other family films of the day, both in craft and character, encouraging children and adults to think more consciously about the food that we consume and where it comes from.